Praise the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, yeah, greetings. I see some familiar faces. Um, so let me ask you a question. I always ask questions when you come here. Where are you from? Heaven. Yes. <laughs> and who's your father? Abba Father. Abba Father. Amen. Hallelujah. God is our Father. Let, you know, let us just sink that into our heart. Right? Every day you got to wake up and say, my Father is God. Amen. Now today I want to pray and prophesy that our earthly father's wounds be addressed. It must be addressed. Right? A lot of us carry a lot of wounds in our hearts from our earthly dads. Let me read to you from Numbers 23, 19, King James Version. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man. <laughs> God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should, he should repent. Hath he not, has he said and hath he not do it? Has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Everything that God said, he made it good. Everything that he said, he did. Okay, every promise, right? So Abba, can I tell you something? Abba didn't rob you of child support. <laughs> Some of us have this issue, right? With our fathers on earth. I feel very strongly you need to get rid of that. Take that out of your lives. Okay, you got to move on. You have a real father in heaven. Right? He's not an absentee dad. He's not an abusive dad. No, he's a good father. Amen. Let's break that. So we are seeds of God. We came from Him, but through our parents. We're His children. He loves us, right? Can you say that today? Come on, say it. My Abba loves me. My Abba loves me. Amen, right? Now, I want to state clearly to you that we've been given giftings, okay? We've been given gifting, like gifts from your Abba. And you've been given callings. Callings are your identity. You've been given that by your Abba. And they are irrevocable. That means God does not take back those things. The gifts and the calling that God has given you, it's up to you to do what you're supposed to do, to honour Him. But if you want to honour somebody else or you want to honour Satan, that's your problem. You know, but it's already given to you, right? So we are His kids and we've been given gifts by Him from the Holy Spirit. So let me tell you something. You are not what you do. Can I repeat that again? You're not what you do, okay? Even if you do it well, right? If that's true then, the moment you don't do well, you will have an identity crisis if you are what you do, right? So you're not what you do. Get that straight. Your identity is not in what you do, but who you are in Christ Jesus. you got to be in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, there's no problem. In Christ Jesus, there's no sadness. In Christ Jesus, there's no disease. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Not out of Jesus. In Jesus. Amen? Alright, so Hebrew for Christ is HaMashiach. The anointed King, Saviour. It's not just a Saviour, you know. The King. That's why Peter, when he asked Peter, Peter, who do you say I am? He says, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He goes, ah, I didn't tell you this, but the Father in Heaven told you this. Therefore, now, upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, the word rock there is not Peter. Peter is Petros. Upon this rock, the Petra, that means upon this revelation that he is the king of kings and he is the son of the living God, means equal to God, co-equal to God. Therefore, upon this revelation, I can build my church. Without that revelation, you can't build the church. Okay? Because then the church will be saying, like beforehand, they would be saying, oh, some say you're a prophet, some say you're Elijah. No. No, prophets and all those guys, they can't own the kingdom. The king owns the kingdom. Amen? Get it? Alright, so today, we're going to quickly read. It's a, it's a long sermon, so I, don't, I hope you guys are okay. If we cannot finish, we'll do it next week. But <laughs> Matthew 4, 11, 1 to 11 of the NKJV is the basis of where I'm going to draw the sermon from. Okay? This is the part where Jesus was baptized, okay, he was baptized by John the Baptist and then heaven opened 
and God sent the Holy Spirit down upon him. He came upon him. The all-powerful Holy Spirit came upon him. And then his ministry started. The Lord said, when the heaven opened, the Lord said, this is my dearly beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So in that moment, you have the Trinity. You got the Son going to the water in obedience. You got the Holy Spirit. Because of the obedience, power came and God declared that this is my dearly beloved Son, right? So then Jesus was led. Okay, I'm going to read to you. Then Jesus, you got it up there. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit. By whom? By the Holy Spirit. It wasn't like, you know, a lot of people say, oh no, he was in the desert fasting. It's like, no, he's always on a mission. He can't just go in the desert with no mission. How many of us do things without mission, right? Without any vision, no mission, just keep doing. <laughs> You're a human being, not human doing. So anyway, so he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. See? Led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the Son of God, command these stones become bread. But he answered and he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, see, he repeated it again. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. What Satan was doing was he was quoting from Psalm 91. Because Jesus says, right, he says, it is written in, it, you know, it is written in verse 4, he says that man shall not live by bread alone. Now, Satan's adapting. He's adapting. He goes, okay, you're using scripture, I'm using scripture. Satan knows scripture. Don't think he doesn't know scripture. He was like one of the most revered angels ever in heaven. He was a minister of culture when he was in heaven. So he came down and he, used, he said this, oh, it is written that he shall give his angels charge over you. He was quoting from Psalm 91, but he was misquoting it, right? Half truth. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, it is written again. See how it is? You see how important it is? You know how important it is for you to know your Bible? You're tempted by Satan. Satan is challenging you and your life depends on it. Only the Word can save you. Amen. That's why Jesus kept going back to the Bible. It is written. It is written. It is. Now, if you go and you, you face Satan and you go, it is written, uh, <laughs> you don't know a single verse from the Bible, it's a problem. Satan has an advantage over you, right? Because he knows the Bible. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against stone. Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, he doesn't give up. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. See that? Satan says to Jesus, You fall down and worship me, I'll give you all this kingdom. Right? And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to Jesus, to him. Angels were there, but Jesus had to go through something. You see that? Angels were always there, right? So today I want to talk about that. Now, here I want to tell you revival. We, people are always talking about revival. Revival starts with you. It has to start with you, right? And you know, how does it start with you? When you are transformed with the knowledge and understanding of the kingdom. That's when you truly start to revive. You, you, start, you know how you revive? You start to die to yourself. You die to your flesh, right? your fleshly desires. We were reading and we were singing earlier, right? Die to your flesh. So I feel very strongly when I was writing this that there's a word circulating in the spirit right now. The word is process. Everybody say process. process. Right? What is a process? Process, I thought about it, is the space between where we have been and where we're going. Number one. Do we have it up there? No. Oh. <laughs> it's all over the place. Where we have been and where we are going, that's the process. Where we are and our potential, that's the process. Where we want, what we want and what we will see, that's the process. 
the promise of God is easy to take in, right? People like that. God promised me this, God promised me this. But discerning the promise is a challenge because consecration or association with the sacred must be tested. Okay? Like people say, oh, what is consecration? Well, you're, you're getting purified by God. You know, when you receive God, the Holy Spirit is in you, empowering you to let God out. <laughs> the deposit of the Holy Spirit is to testify to Jesus. Now, is He testifying to Jesus in your life? Or are you trying to suppress the Holy Spirit and say, I want my own way? Right? The first problem, I call 911 instead of calling God. Go to God, right? So the process requires a purification. It requires a test. Example of what we read earlier, Matthew 4, 1 to 11. Jesus was in the desert, not in the wilderness. He fasted and he was challenged. He was actually challenged, right? Some versions say he was tempted, but he was actually challenged. Why? Because the devil kept saying to him, if you're the son of God, that's a challenge, right? He's not saying, oh, you're hungry. No, if you're the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. He could do it. He could do it, but he didn't. Why? He goes back to the word of the Lord, right? Okay. Everybody says this. Like, this is really important. I am a process child of God. Amen. Right? People often fail in the process of God. You see, God wants to do for and in a man his will for his glory. He wants to do for and in a man his will for his glory, right? For means in His promise, His mercy for us. In means trusting in Him in faith, empowering us and transforming us. The Holy Spirit's job is to empower us and transform us to become more and more like Jesus. Amen? So why though? Why? The question is why? Because all glory belongs to Him. He owns everything, right? He wants to be successful for His name's sake. He wants you to be successful. Amen? Now, Get this, the king, our king, does not exclude any detail in your life, by the way. There is not even a single detail excluded in your life. You are his subjects in his kingdom. A good king does not leave your subject just winging it. Just saying, you know, thinking, oh, maybe I should do it. This. Oh, maybe I should do it. This. No, he gave us a manual. It's called the Bible. Everything you want to know about life is in there. If you don't discover it, you're winging it every day. It's like you buy a, I don't know, a camera and then you don't read the manual and then you keep winging it. And then one day, it's like, oh, why is it zooming in and out? <laughs> it's called a setting, right? You got to read it. Okay, so the king does not exclude any detail in your life. You are the subject of his kingdom. Why do I say that? Because I was reflecting. Bad or good people, young or old folks, out or in your life, all subjects of it, divorce or engage. You are in college or you're smoking weed outside, stone out. You're still his people. You're still his people. He's going to get his glory one way or another. Did you know that? God is going to, the maker is going to get his glory. That means every fame that belongs to him. Is, he's going to get it. You say, well, maybe the guy is hopeless. You know, he's like, Weed out every day. He's going to, like, you know, die of drugs. Okay, well, there's still Judgment Day. He's still going to get the glory. Amen. That's why there's Judgment Day. Judgment Day is a good day, by the way. It's a good day. Whatever that is rightfully yours will be given to you on that day. Amen. That's what judgment is. Justice. Amen. So, he's going to get his glory. Habakkuk 2.14 NLT says, for as the waters fill the sea, the earth will be filled with the awareness and awareness of the glory of the Lord. Just like the water fills the sea, the earth will be filled with the awareness of the glory of the Lord. Knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is going to flood the world. It is already happening. In fact, it is prophesied. The knowledge of God will be flooding everywhere. Amen? You're not escaping it. You look at a tree. How do you think the tree grew? Okay? How does the tree know when to stop flowering? Right? Even now, it's confused a bit with all the snow and the cold and everything. But you know, the tree will just 
make it back up and, 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 and do his thing. Right? The birds will come out at the right time. I don't see no birds in my place right now. They're all sleeping somewhere. How do they know? Do they go to a school to train to go to sleep somewhere? No. How does the bear hibernate? He just knows. He's created by God, right? But we being rebellious, even though we know, we fight it. That's a problem, right? So how does God's awareness go through all the entire world? Through events like Sozo that we have, okay? That we proclaim the, the Lord's name and we, you know, we touch people and allow the Holy Spirit to heal them. In the Philippines, in India, in Canada, through kingdom revelations, released in these events, whether publicly or personally, people will come to know the glory of God. That's why I say, when, when I use the term glory manifested, that means when people get healed, His glory is manifested. Amen? His fame is manifested. Now, the process though, the thing is, God gets His glory out of His process, children. Okay? Now, the process though can be painful. Can I tell you this? That when you're going through that process, that when Jesus was going through that process in the desert, it was painful. It wasn't easy. He was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And then he got this guy. He's not in a red suit, by the way, the devil. He came and he says, you know what? I'm change these rocks to bread. It's good, you know, bread, fresh bread. No, right? The process can be painful. But you know one thing? God can camp there. <laughs> he can camp there in that pain. He's not in a hurry. Why? Because he loves you. He wants the best version of you in you. If you're going through the process, you're not in the best version of you yet. You are in a, in a version that is not recognizable to God yet. That's why Jesus says, you call me Lord, Lord, but I don't know you. Not yet. You're in the process. Some people try to skip it, right? They try to skip it. Some people try to prematurely release from the process. They want to be gone from the process. And how do we do that? One of the ways is, we only praise God for good things and then, you know, where's the first sign of problem, we run away. We just, you know, we forget about God, right? We want out. No, no, no. I was writing this down. His scalpel from heaven. I call it scalpel from heaven. The word of God. He allows his word to cut out the you out of you. I wrote this down, I gave it to my wife. I, just, I don't know what you're talking about. He allows his word to cut out the you out of you so you get, in, you get there with him in you. So, mouthful. You see, until you're perfected, you will be in the process. Don't complain. You're not in perfection yet. You're going through a process, Right? You will go from one process to into another process. You see, from glory to glory. Do you recall when the Israelites were in the desert? The glory and miracles manifested in the desert for the Israelites. It manifested in the process. Not in your prayer, in the process. The manna, remember that? They had no food, manna came from heaven. The Red Sea parting. It was in the process. Red Sea parting? I mean, you're kidding me? Red Sea parting, like you got Pharaoh and his soldiers coming for them and they were told to kill everybody. Not one should be spared. And you got all these forces. You can hear them. You know what I mean? Sometimes I watch those movies, you know, like kingdom movies and all this fighting, warring in the old days. And then you can see, and then there was one, the strategy and all this Hundreds of thousands of soldiers there. And you can, I just put myself there and go, if you're one of the Israelites, I mean, you're panicking. You can hear horses are coming. Red Sea open. By the way, the Red Sea is not red in color. It's just Reed Sea. The Reed is full of Reed, by the way. It's called Reed Sea. Cloud by day. They had cloud by day. Can you imagine that? Cloud by day. You're in the desert, got clouds. Leading you, covering you, fire by night, fire by night. The angel of the Lord came and fire by night, guiding them, keeping them warm, right? And guiding them. Burning bush. How about Moses, right? All those miracles were found in the process. If you're in the process, it's good news. Because all those miracles were found in the process. God will process you in every way. 
Now, some of you may like acceleration. I do, you know. I like fast cars. Can't help it. I just do, right? Speed zone kind of guys. You remember the show, um, what's that, Top Gun? What did they say? What did he say? He says, I need this. I, what, what did he say? I have the need, the need for speed. <laughs> Top Gun. Some of us are in the rush most of our life. Always rushing. Rushing. But however, our king may think otherwise, you know. You may want to rush, but he's not going to rush it. Because it's in his own timing. His timing is correct, right? Sometimes you need more processing before going into the fast lane. Like fast cars. Fast cars, people know. They need to be tested and tested and tested like racing cars before they actually go to the real race. Right? Otherwise, something is going to blow or something, a major accident will happen. So God allows you to be processed. Why? To bring His promise into reality. That's the reason. Right? So you don't mess up His promise, number one. Number two, you will be successful. You will be successful. Now, one other thing that when you, when you go through a process is His promise through the process will draw people, by the way. It will draw people into your circle. Right? What do I mean by that? You're not always under attack. Some people always say, oh, in the, you know, in church, always say, I'm under attack. It's an attack. It's an attack. Just because you're experiencing difficulties, it does not mean you're under attack all the time. Right? Even Satan was used in that example earlier on, I was telling you, the Holy Spirit is the one that led Jesus into the desert. Then Satan came. He thought he could do something, but he was actually getting used. <laughs> right? And yeah, he was part of the process. Why do I say that? Because Romans 8.28 says this, that God will make all things work together for our good, for those who love him and who are called to his purpose. So sometimes, you know, like especially bakers, you know, you people who bake, like if you're missing one ingredient, and we knew that, we miss one ingredient and you use something else, something bad's happening <laughs> to that whole entire recipe, right? It may look like a cookie, but when you bite on it, it's like a cardboard, right? Something's missing. So you need all the ingredients. In your life, it's the same way. All the ingredients have to come together, and God will make it good. And sometimes the ingredient is spicy. Sometimes it's tough, like, you know, whatever, right? You need a pepper, you know, or something. Something that normally would just make you sneeze or something, but when it's in, it put into the recipe, it tastes very good. But all those things need to come together. In life, don't always say, oh, I'm good already. You know, maybe sometimes God will send a catfish into your life. Did I ever tell you about the joke of the catfish? No? Okay, not a joke. It's a story. It's about the people trying to import codfish from the east to the west, you know, to west coast California. And every time they try to bring the codfish, they go bad, right? They die. And, and then finally, they say, oh, no, let's just put them in fresh seawater and, and try to transport and they still tasted bad. So finally they asked, they saw this old guy who's an old fisherman. He says, oh, you guys are doing it all wrong. You need to put a catfish in the tank. He said, why? Because the catfish is the natural predator of the codfish. So he'll keep him on his fins. Not on his toes, but on his fins. Because now he's keeping fresh. He's not dying or thinking he's going to die or, you know, no. So it remained fresh because of the catfish. So I'm just saying, sometimes God will send a catfish into your life. Don't just tell God to, you know, pray that this guy is gone. This guy is, is causing me so much problem in my life. Better pray that he's gone. No. He's not going anywhere. God's going to camp there until you realize that you have to die to yourself. Your personality has to be changed. Now, even plants, you know, I was thinking about plants when I was writing this, like plants, like in a drought. What happens in a cold? What happens in a drought? You know, actually plants, I researched it out. Plants, trees actually grow deeper roots in the drought. They actually grow deeper. They're looking for water. Guess who is our water? Who is our living water? Jesus. So in times of difficulties in your life, you're supposed to grow root deep into His Word so to find more discover, have personal experience with God, have an encounter with God, right? Ask God, God, lead me. What is going on here? But just lead me. I just trust you. I don't know what's going on, but lead us, right? And so, 
God's process is designed to draw us closer to Him. Just like the root draws closer to the water, we are to draw closer to the living water, Jesus Himself, right? Now, God even said to Satan in the book of Job, remember Job, the book of Job? He says, you know, have you tried my servant Job? Like, you know, Satan was saying, oh yeah, no. This guy, man, if you cut off everything, cut off his family, cut off everything, he's going to curse you. But I'm just paraphrasing. Right? He's not going to worship you. you know. And then, and then God said, no, you can do everything, but don't kill him. Because God knows. right? And God is saying that because he's saying that to Satan because he knows that Satan and Job is going to see his promise come to pass. His promise is going to come to pass. And Job will be closer to God. And that's what exactly happened in the book of Job, right? Marriage, whether it's career, children, all are in the process. Handling, persecution, critics, snakes, demons, all process. I mean, I went through a process. When I was touched by God, like people couldn't understand me, the church couldn't understand me. But that's okay. That was a process. I learned. I learned in that process, in that desert, in that wilderness, I learned how to be a son. Right? A son that is loved by him. He says, this is my dearly beloved son. Past tense. You are loved. Right? In other versions, this is my dearly loved son. So you come from there, knowing that you are loved. Right? Satan is trying to say, no, you know, do this, do this. Then something else will happen. No. Right? So, Ephesians 1.4, it says that He has chosen you before the foundation of the world. God chose you and blessed you before the foundation of the world. How many of you know praise will enroll you in the process? When you praise God, doesn't matter what is going through your life, you're going to be enrolled in the process. Stay in there. Don't give up. Okay, there are times when it's so difficult. Life is difficult. Children, husband, kids, whatever, you know, like work. It may be difficult, but stay in it. Know that you're going through a process. Miracles is happening. Amen? So we need to understand that when we're in the process, we need to ascribe all glory to Him. Don't immediately try to curse God. <laughs> like what Adam did, right? It's the woman you gave me. Immediately. No. He should be thanking God. Imagine if, if Adam praised God. Yeah, I know I failed, but I praise you anyways. You're Lord. I think that may have been a different outcome. <laughs> but he went and he launched into cursing. So, basically he's going to work you out of you and work him into you. That's what the Lord does all the time. He's going to work you, your personality, out of you. And he's going to work him into you. Right? Even Jesus could not escape the process. He had to go through that desert. Why? That wilderness. Why though? Right? Even the baptism of Jesus was a process. Did you know that? The baptism of Jesus. Jesus actually walked up to John. John the Baptist goes, oh, he knows him. He's a rabbi. He's his cousin. He says, no, I'm not worthy to baptize you. I, I, I'm not even worthy to untie your sandals. Forget about baptizing you. He says, no, 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 John. He says, this is a requirement. That means it's a requirement from God. That means he's walking in obedience. And John was telling, by the way, the book of John, you read why he was baptizing people. He was baptizing people because God had told him to baptize people because that's how I'm going to reveal the Messiah to you. So he was just baptizing everybody, everybody coming in. <laughs> Come on, get in there. And they say, oh, you're not the Messiah. Get in there, you're not the Messiah. Until Jesus came and then got in there, came back out and the heaven opened. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit came down like a dove upon Jesus. And God spoke. God spoke. That's how you know He's the Messiah. Amen? But He had to go through that process. If Jesus didn't want to go through that process, He said, no, I'm a son of God. You know, I don't want to be baptized by you. I don't need no baptism. I'm sinless. Baptism is to clear out sin. Why should I go down the water? It doesn't matter. If the Father says go down, go down. Because then ministry would have started, cross wouldn't have happened, resurrection wouldn't have happened, nothing would have happened if he disobeyed. Now you see the importance of being obedient to God, right? 
baptism. God spoke a process into creation. Right? That's why, you know, like, it's like, how did Jesus, how, how could he go to the cross? How did he, look, you know, how, how could he do that? How could he get through the desert? Why, why would he be led by the Holy Spirit into the desert, right? God knew that Satan was going to come and just attempt to challenge his identity. If you're the son of God, that's identity challenge, by the way. And how often does the devil is challenging your identity too? You're a Christian? You're a Catholic? You, you do this? Isn't it? That's what happens to us. God knew, but God had a different plan. Okay? Like, he spoke a process into creation, but later on you learn, I'm going to tell you, he has a word for pre-processing. <laughs> he will give a word before the process. Right? Now, God spoke process into creation. Why? Let there be light, let there be the sun, the moon. Why? Because imagine if He says, created you and I. We would be floating in space without a space suit. No earth, no water, no nothing. It won't last very long. God spoke and science was born. What was born? Gravity. God spoke and gravity was born. That's the natural law of the earth. Gravity. And without gravity, we're floating around. Now, during Jesus, before Jesus' baptism, God spoke. God spoke again. God will always speak. He won't leave you just hanging. He spoke and He said, This is my dearly beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Can I tell you something? Jesus didn't do anything in ministry yet. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he, he was hanging around Mary and doing all kinds of things, you know. But his ministry started after he got baptized. Now, why did God say, this is my dearly beloved son in whom I'm well pleased? He hasn't done anything yet. See? Right? Why? See, God will validate you before so you will not suffer performance anxiety. You know? Like a lot of times we suffer performance anxiety. And I'm going to do this. Gonna do this. God already spoke. So you need to go back into the Word and say what He said about you. Jesus in the desert was a template for us because why? We will all go through that, that type, a certain type of desert, a certain type of wilderness in our life. Life is a long journey, you know? My dad lived to a hundred and his stories was endless. <laughs> he was like, oh, dad, oh, that's interesting, interesting. You know, the longer you live, the more stories you're going to have. But hopefully your stories will be one of victory over that desert. Because you will have deserts, 100%. It's a guarantee, okay? Because why? God loves you and he's going to pre-process you and then process you. Hallelujah. Now, why did he have to go into the desert? Why? He's so, he's sinless, you could say, right? He's without sin. Why, why does he need to be tempted by the devil? What's the point of all that, right? Besides, he was already in the temple at age 12, studying with all those uh, religious leaders and all that. Why would he have to go through the desert? That's the question most people, I don't know, some people ask, I ask. Right? Why would he, you know, do that? Because not all environment is good for the process. If you keep hanging around church all the time and you never go out and get processed, it's not conducive to the process. And that's why Jesus needed to go out to a place where it's totally foreign. He was among wild animals. Like, have you ever been to a place where you are lost? I was lost one time when I was young with all these King Scouts and all that. My friends, they couldn't do a thing. <laughs> They've been King Scout all their lives. Right? They use all the, you know, but in the Malaysian jungle is different. <laughs> Everything wants to eat you. Right? Everything. We were stopped by the, I don't know, some kind of wild animal. We could feel them. They were growling. You know, they're, they're just waiting to eat us up. And then one of the guys pulled up his, his, his pants and oh, he starts screaming because 
his whole entire legs is filled with leeches. All right. Those are big leeches. Oldest tropical forest in the world. A lot of things want to eat you. But the one thing, though, we didn't panic. We did not panic. And then, like, oh, one guy was like, I hear the boat. We must be close to the water. Oh, my friend, Henke, the smallest guy. Henke, you are the lightest. Climb up the tree. Well, the tree was full of moss. Couldn't get up. So finally, somehow, I was just saying, I said, you know what, guys? We have machete. We're hacking our way out of this. Right? And then one other wise guy goes, what is a small little creek? It'll lead to the ocean. Follow the creek, follow the creek. Let the swamp. <laughs> Still couldn't get out. So finally I said, guys, I'm going to say it second time. Now we hack our way out of this. So we did. We hack our way out of this. And we came out on the other side of the island. Ah. Were we anxious? Yes, we were anxious. Um, so God will always give you a word to prevent you from performance anxiety. Sometimes you're in the process, you get really anxious. He'll give you a word. You're my dearly beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, here comes Jesus, goes to the desert, and in the desert, if you are the son of God, ah, wait a minute. My papa says I'm his dearly beloved son. Just a chapter over. See how beautiful our God is? He prepared Jesus because he knew this guy in a red suit is going to ask him, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God, right? he asked so many times. And Jesus knew, I'm the dearly beloved son of the Father. Therefore, I honor the Father and I obey the Father and I go back into his word on what he says about me and not this guy in a red suit trying to tell me to do things I'm not supposed to do. Amen. The Spirit of God brought Jesus into the environment that was conducive to the process. That was the wilderness. In the desert, everything is cranked up. Heat is cranked up. Stress is cranked up. Pressure is cranked up. One that will test and purify you. And we all have our deserts, right? Something good is about to happen. There's a process beforehand, right? Why does God do that? Because God is measuring every angle of you. So you'll be ready to serve. Do you know that? A lot of people run into serving the church and serving everything, but they're not ready. They have not been processed. Right? They go in there and then it became all about them because they're not processed properly. Right? Jesus was all heaven had. He was the champion from heaven. And God gave him to you and I. He gave him to you and I. That was risky business. You check your heart. <laughs> You're like, you see somebody you don't even trust. You see that person you don't trust. You go to the superstore, you don't trust the price. You check this, check that. Well, let me go check in Walmart and see. Uh, I heard that I can actually change the price. I can get the discount or whatever price matching they call it. Eh? You don't trust nobody. Jesus was all heaven had and God shed him. Most costly gift to be given to you and I. Just process that for a second. Just think that was... <laughs> it was risky business. No. Jesus was used to escaping. Like, you know, when he was tiny, his, his mom and dad, he, you know, God prepared them, right? Pre-processed. And told Joseph, Joseph, take your family away. Something bad's about to happen. And he took his family to Egypt, right? Remember that? It's always pre-processing. Like, you know, Joseph, don't get rid of Mary. Marry her. Remember that? Pre-processing. Right? So, he was used to escaping Herod's you know, used to that. But let me talk to you today. Used to being delivered from danger is very different from being delivered to your destiny. If you have been going, you know what, I've been delivered from all this danger and this and that. But no, your, your point is to point to Jesus. That's your destiny. 
right? Different level, different atmosphere. God will strip and bring you to a different level. He'll bring you to your wilderness. So don't always complain and try to pray things away. See the goodness of God in it. Whether it's a family member fighting you or what, you know, see the goodness of God. What is God doing in my heart? How is He processing me? Nobody shows up as a friend of God and not go through pain, by the way. <laughs> See, I'm a friend of God. No more pain. No, pain's coming. Jesus promised you that. He says, you know, they hate me, they're going to hate you. Right? So in his circle, wilderness is not some threat and not some bad news. It's not. It's a platform to rise higher. That's what the wilderness is there for. Why do I say that? Because we are overcomers. The Bible says we are overcomers. You know, we are not some conqueror. We are overcomers. There's a difference. Here's the difference. If I have 150,000 soldiers and my enemy has only 10,000, oh, it's easy. I'll conquer them. But reverse it, reverse it. Now you have 300 like Gideon and there's 150,000 soldiers over there and you went there and you just beat everybody up and you won the war. You're, you have overcome. Only with Jesus can you do that. Amen. Our loving Father validated Jesus and then led him into the wilderness. He validated him. This is my dearly beloved son. Whole new level. <laughs> now, the one thing that got through my mind is going through this this. Bible verses, is why do that to Jesus? This whole desert thing, like, is it necessary? Like, why? After all, he's sinless, right? Dad? Abba? <laughs> he's sinless. Well, the answer came, genetic code. Genetic code. Joseph and Mary's brokenness needed to be dealt with. You're sent here, but born in man and woman. Lineage of David. God breaks that off in the process. So the generational curse is dealt with and destroyed. The unfinished business, I call it, as a lot of us have unfinished business, we smuggle it into our life. You know, things that are in the past, you know, people said bad things about you. You bring it here, you bring it here, and then how can you live here when you bring yesterday in here all the time, right? It needs to be dealt with. Only in the wilderness it can be dealt with. Only in the wilderness. 40 years for the Israelites. They were lost for 40 years. All these things cannot be dealt with in the temple. It has to be dealt with in the wilderness. That's why we need to understand why Jesus spent a lot of time in the temple getting pre-processed and then go through the process. Jesus had to go back and finish what Israel couldn't. Led by the Spirit of God, did not the Israelites get led by fire by night? Right? Cloud by day? But they couldn't do it. 40 years in the desert. Here's the representation and the revelation in this, okay? One day for every year spent by the Israelites in the desert. 40 days for 40 years. Jesus, the Son of Man, needed to redeem that for them. Process happens because you allow Him to process you. You authorize to praise and thanksgiving. You know how you get into the process? You authorize by praise and thanksgiving. You try that. And then you're going through the process, but you see miracles. When I was going through the process, it was a difficult time because nobody could understand me. How could I walk in miracles? Right? Because I just kept authorizing. I kept praising God and giving Him thanks, even though I was facing so many challenges. People couldn't understand. Friends left me. You know, what are you, gone crazy? Every day you talk about Jesus. What's wrong with you? You're supposed to be a businessman. What happened to you? One of my friends actually told me, he said, Tom, if I didn't know you for that long, I would have thought that you'd gone mad talking about Jesus all the time. One day he was ill. And he called me up. And we prayed. 
heal. I'm not mad. I just believe in a higher reality that God can heal you. Amen. So, your heart is tested in the wilderness. Can I tell you that? I keep saying that, you know, like just sing that into your heart. But Jesus fasted to be processed. Best is to be consecrated, purified, fast. Fast and pray, fast and pray. Consecration must be updated, just like your phones. It needs to be updated once in a while. When you got saved, you were probably on fire, right? Oh, I believe in Jesus. And then after a while, <laughs> church happens, people happens. And then you're like, oh. Go back into the process. Time for wilderness. Every time you feel like you don't have that, you know, arm and the fire anymore, go into that wilderness, man. Go into fasting and praying. Amen. Be uncomfortable. Go out and evangelize. Attend prayer meeting. Fast, pray unceasingly. Because if you, like, can I tell you something? If you don't get consecrated before the process, you can go crazy in the process. Because when, during consecration, like when you actually fast and pray, you actually focus on God. Like when the process comes, you can handle it. You can overcome it. But if you don't, then you're trying to figure out things on your own, then you just get worse and worse and worse. You go, why is this those bad things happening to me? Why is it happening to me? Because you need to be the better version of you. God loves you and He's preparing you for something bigger, something greater, something more difficult, an assignment that's more difficult. You need to get all that spiritual muscle up. Otherwise, you're going to be... You, you know, first thing Satan come and tell you, oh, are you the daughter of God? <laughs> You're like, I'm not sure. Uh-oh, uh, uh -oh, right? I'm not sure. Well, then you better turn this bread into stone. Mm. Be uncomfortable. Turn over and trust God. Repent. Call on Him. By the way, Satan hates the people of God. You know, he hates them. He's jealous. He's so jealous. But, let me tell you something, it's not always a personal attack. Right? Today we talk about process. It's not always a personal attack. Right? The Bible teaches us, lead us not into temptation. Correct? Can I tell you something? Temptation cannot be bound or loose. <laughs> it's just there. It's not going anywhere. People get tempted. People get tempted. But the devil will use their emotions to tell you you're not free. Right? The emotions part. Be set free. Learn how to handle temptation in the process. If you can't handle temptation, you are actually not fully processed yet. That's why you're always like tempted, you know. Oh, I want to eat Krispy Kreme, right? I don't know, Krispy Kreme is pretty good, but. <laughs> God is testing all angles of your decision, testing all of your yes, here I am, Lord. He's testing that every moment of your life. If it's not deep enough, God will excavate you more. Like, for instance, a building. Like, if you want to build this building, I don't know how many floors this building is, like 10, 11 floors. Every, okay, here's an engineering uh, thing you need to know. If the building is so many floors, the foundation has to be one-third of so many floors into the ground. Okay? That's... Huh? House built on the rock. Right? Right? It has to be, like if it's nine floors, three floors has to be in the ground for it to be strong. Gotta dig deeper. Dig deeper. Just like that tree, right?
I like to eat. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I like to eat. In the moments of hunger, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's really important. My meals, really, I was just telling my mother-in-law this morning. Every meal to me is important. I eat three meals a day. It has to be important. It has to be properly made. You know, this and that. But, the thing is, it's not like you like to eat or whatever. It's about what we do with our appetite that determines us. Did you know that? Right? And the Bible says, Blessed are those that hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen? The kingdom of God has got to be more than just church revival. It's got to be more than just this way of thinking or that way. The kingdom of God is bigger than the church. Amen? Give us today our daily bread. Daily test when you are starved. Are you hungry for the Lord's word today? Right? Then the process is coming. Because if you're hungry for the Lord's word, the process is coming. He can use you. Right? You know how when you, I don't know, here in school here, I, when I, where I grew up in Malaysia, if you're a good student and you're well disciplined, you might be made monitor of the class. There's such a thing. The monitor of the class is the one that is assigned to take care of the class when teachers have teachers' meeting. And it's, a, it's not like here, you know, they have teachers' meeting. Oh, no school. No. <laughs> there, teachers' meeting, school continues. And then the monitor has to monitor the class, right? Of course, in every class, there's a lot of naughty boys and naughty girls, and the monitor has a tough time, right? Man. God will test your appetite. Because the process is coming to determine if you're hungry for flesh or his word. That's coming. Amen. Amen. You got to look back and go, okay, what was the pre process word for me when you're going through that process? What did God say? That means you got to go in the Bible and say, okay, what did God say about this situation? What was God? God already said that before time began. Why not we look up and say, okay, what did he say? What was the pre-processed word for me? Like, you know, a pre-processed word is like, this is my dearly beloved son, and then Satan comes and goes, if you're the son of God. That was a pre-processed word so that Jesus can get through that desert, right? So what was the pre-processed word that God gave you before your desert, before your wilderness? You need to dif discover that and write it down. Every day that you read your Bible, you need to write it down. Oh, God is telling me this today. Right? For I have planned to prosper you, not to harm you. That's pre-process. So when things are bad, you go, no, my, my daddy says that he's, he's planning to prosper me, not to harm me, give me a bright future. And not to put me in this bad situation. That's important, right? Look back. There's a genesis to everything. Do you know that even in the book of uh, Genesis, like, before Adam and Eve fell, he had a pre-processed word too. What was his pre-processed word? God said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Or you will die. I don't know how much more pre-processing you can get from the, the maker where he tells you, don't touch that, you're going to die. And he went and touched it anyways. My goodness. He had a pre-processed word. So if the pre-processed word comes before your trial, before your desert time, right, understand that you need to hang on to that pre-processed word. Right? If he says he's going to prosper, he's going to prosper you. Don't let anybody tell you you're not going to prosper. It's a process. Right? Satan came and said, oh, do this. It's a process. Just know it's a process. In that process, Worship God and give Him praise. Ascribe all glory to Him. Then you see the miracles. Every time the Israelite worship God and give Him praise, saw miracles. Manna came, quail came, Red Sea parted, you know, whatever, right? They saw all that slippers that never wore out. No. Yeah. I'm skipping a lot of notes because uh, that way we can get through the day. <laughs> the devil loves to say God is not truthful from day one, even in Eden. 
Can I tell you something? Feelings don't know your future. Don't say, I feel, I feel something. No, feelings don't know your future. Be quiet and stay quietly faithful to His Word. That's how you're going to get through your future. Stop saying, I feel, I feel, I'm going to... No, you feel nothing. <laughs> God's Word is everything. Amen? Why? Because faith tells you God's promise is good. Now you need to exercise your faith, right? Think of the greatest promise of God. Then shout, I believe it, God. I believe it. In your car, shout. I'm not saying go to your office and shout. You know? In your car, shout, God, I believe it. I believe it. Or you can shout in your office too. <laughs> Open your mouth. I believe in God. God, I believe in you. Listen, some people may go through some candy. I call it candy. You know, some people call it cancer. I don't like to give credit to cancer. Candy. Some people may go through candy, bankruptcy, a divorce or whatever. Just say, no, God, you are good. This is just a process. Right? I mean, know that Satan is more committed to you than you are to yourself. Oh, yes. He doesn't want you to be successful. He's like the mega stalker of your life. He stalked Jesus the whole time. Did you know that in the desert, after the desert, and then the angels came and ministered to Jesus after the trial? And then he says there, Satan came another time. He waited for another time. Stalking Jesus the whole time. Stalked him all the way to the cross. But he lost at the cross. He stalked you from the day of Adam in Eden. Why? Because that was your great, 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 great grandfather. He was stalking Eve all the time. Until he had the opportunity to tell her to seek dominion when she's already been given dominion. That's why they fell. Because if you've been given dominion and God said you already have the authority and you're looking for authority, you're like, what are you doing? You're giving God a slap in the face. Like, no, I don't believe you. I believe this guy in a red suit. Like, are you crazy? No. He's a stalker. Don't let him stalk you. The Bible, in, you know, like when you talk about Cain and Abel, he says, like, you know, God told Cain, it's like, sin lies at the door knocking. That's the devil stalking him. Sometimes you go through a process, sometimes you go through a simultaneous process. There'll be two or three different processes happening in your life. Breakthrough is for those who can handle back-to-back -back processes. Seriously. Sometimes it's, oh my goodness, how could it get any worse? Like, i just gone through this, and then now this, and then now this. Because this, this, and this is coming. Greater glory. Get through this, get through that. Get through this, get through that. Don't get through this, that one may be a challenge. If I don't go through all those challenges, man, I would be... I don't know. It would have been difficult for me to get through it. So every time Satan is stalking you, right? Switch on him. Switch on him. This is my advice to you. Don't remain the same. Right? He swing at you once, you praise God. He swing at you twice, you praise God even louder. Swing at you a thousand times, you praise God even louder. Amen. If Satan knows that you normally quit, like he'll come and say, oh, you're quitting, you're quitting, you know, you're quitting, you, you can't do it. No, you switch on him. Change. Don't quit. Don't quit. That's right. Who are you to say I quit? No, I'm not quitting today. I'm not quitting on my God today. No way. And you're sad. Oh, he says you're sad all the time. You're always sad. You're sad. Get happy. Okay? Do something. Go out there. Celebrate. Change. Shift gear. Do the opposite. It's time for the opposite. Deliverance is in the difference, by the way. Prosperity is in the difference. History comes to those who won't let the devil figure them out. Sometimes Satan will use promotion, you know, he'll use promotion. Like what he did to Jesus. Right? I'll give you all these kingdoms if you so bow down and worship. He'll give you a false promotion. Don't let it happen. Right? 
It's not your opinion, not your idea, not your promises. It's God's word. Go back to His word. What do you want from God? What do you want? You know? God wants to test your fear. He takes you through the waters, he takes you through the forest, lost, stopped by tigers. <laughs> what do you want? Jesus' case was through the desert, his was the wilderness, right? And then one other thing I want to tell you, Satan always tries to get you to cut corners. So I'll tell you to cut corners. Just do this faster. Okay? Don't go through this. Don't go through this process. Just jump this queue. A few people get hurt. Never mind. Just jump this queue and you get there faster. Don't let him do that. Worship is not lifting hands. In the spirit is degree of obedience. It's about how much you obey God. That is true worship. You know? That's why Satan said to Jesus, will you should bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this kingdom. No, Jesus said, no, 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 no. Worship is about obeying my Father. Not you. So, worship is compliance in the Spirit to the King. God reveals our worship by showing what we bow to. That's what happened in the desert. I'm almost ending. <laughs> In that passage, if you go back to that particular passage, you know, Jesus says, Worship thy Lord thy God, and then he had a comma. Whenever you put a comma, you're actually talking about God and also talking about yourself, by the way. You have a flash in you. You was flash still. Now he's talking to himself too. This is not talking to the devil. He's talking to himself. The self. Okay? He was talking to his own nature. Because when the devil is gone, the devil can't hang around you all the time. He can't be omnipresent. He has to travel. He's fast. Right? So when he's gone out of your life, you still need to deal with the nature of the man in you. Remember that. Otherwise, Jesus says the devil goes out and comes back seven times. You need to deal with that brokenness in your heart. That's why I start by saying, whosoever father has ill-treated you, repent and just let it go today. Let it go. There's no such thing as delivering the flesh. You have to kill it. <laughs> Deliver, deliver, deliverance, deliver. No, you have to kill your flesh yourself. Just kill it. People backslide because they don't let God process them. That's why. When, when difficulties come in their life, they just, they just don't. They escape. They run. They don't want any difficulties. If you disallow the process, you'll be tormented about promises not happening fast enough. You need to let the process happen. Let it go through the process, you know. Do what David did, King David. You know, King David says, I will bless the Lord with all my soul and all my heart. It's not, it's not like only when and where. Like, oh, I will bless the Lord when good things happen to me. Or if the Lord brings me to some vacation in Tokyo, I'll bless the Lord. Not like that. And then also we need to talk about things that is happening to us. Because when you're in the process, sometimes it's difficult. You need to be vulnerable. That's why it's important for us to be in a church. If you have a difficulty going through something, you can share with your brothers and sisters in confidence and pray together, you know. Don't just go through the process thinking, oh, okay, I can handle it. No. You need to go through it as well. Like a community, you need to walk through it. Like a tribe, that the whole entire Israelites tribe went through the whole process together. Process is not for you, but to you and in you. Working on your personality. You got to tell God to keep you in the process. Keep me in the process, Lord. 
And then don't forget to praise in the process. When you're going through the process of difficulty, praise the Lord. Right? Why? Because the Bible says He resides in praise. You need to praise Him. You just break me, I'll praise you. Suspend me, I'll praise you. Even the devil destroy you, I praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. That's all today. I hope that makes sense to you about process and pre-process. Remember to hold on to the pre-process word of God because He's not a bad God. He's a good God. Before you go through that process, He'll give you a pre-process word to take you through that process. But in the process, remember, praise Him and give thanks. Right? And do the process together with community. Don't just run through it by yourself because sometimes, you know, that's why Jesus says, the, the, the shepherd goes for the one and leaves the 99 because that one is vulnerable. Right? The devil is ready to just pounce on you. And maybe you're fasting and you're hungry and then you start to want to turn the, the stone into bread until your friend comes along and says, no, 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 stone is for stones. Bread is for bread. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Are you blessed? Hallelujah. Thank you.